Redgar showed me his sitting posture at home and we discovered some interesting things. In this video, I asked Redgar to send me some images of his posture and setup at home to see if I could help him better understand a little more about the possible consequences of his posture in the long term. Oh, and if you missed out on the first part of the video, go ahead and check that out because we learn a lot about how he approaches his gameplay and how he approaches his physical health as a pro gamer. I did ask mm -hmm. you definitely to send me a couple of photos um, and yeah. the main goal for me was so that I can help you understand a little more about your posture and what you can possibly do to minimize risk of injury. So something that I think is important to understand first is that, you know, posture is just one part of health. And it's very clear mm -hmm. to you, I think, because you exercise regularly, you get up and take a lot of breaks. So you're not always sitting like that and you get up and move. And so posture and ergonomics are one part. We can think of it like 20%. And then your physical conditioning, you know, all your, how well your muscles work, that's probably like 30 to 40%. And then your lifestyle, like how often you take breaks, how often you move around, change positions, that's also another 30 to 40%. And so that mm -hmm. makes for better overall physical health. And I think that's why you don't deal with as many issues, like over, overuse issues for your back and neck. Um, but mm -hmm. let's talk more in depth about, you know, what I see and, uh, you know, maybe what I rate you as, because, you know, if I were to give you a grade, I'd probably give you a, like a B minus for, uh, for your posture. Um, mm -hmm. but, and the main reason is because of both your lower back here, as you can see, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. your neck, right? And so I wanted to start by talking about your neck, uh, because as you can see in this area, and as you can see in where your monitor is, you definitely have more monitor distance here, which is good, which is not mm -hmm. bad. And, and I actually, I did want to ask you a question. Um, uh, is your chest in contact with the table over here? Yeah. Your chest is touching here, right? Yes, I have okay. like uh, maybe you know like a sign under my chest, like yeah, because uh, you're always putting the, pressure the, the, there, right? Yeah, yeah, the line, yeah. like yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I the used to call it skin. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's funny. So, um, so the lines that I drew here, right, are indicative mm. of the spinal posture you know, mm -hmm. where your spine is. So we're going to focus on the upper body, right? And so mm -hmm. you can see here that your neck is bent backwards like that. It's it's up. And my main area of concern with this is the muscles, you know, around here and the joints mm -hmm. around here. So do you ever mm -hmm. get headaches or stiffness in your neck? No, I, I, I thought that in that position, it will be like more easier for me to not focus so my neck will be more relaxed mm -hmm. because I, I standing like 19 degrees uh, during my um, during my table and mm -hmm. I will be stable and don't use a lot of my muscles on neck and I don't have to think a lot how to stable my neck or something like that. Oh, so because I wait. thought that I will have to use a lot of energy if I will mm -hmm. be like on 65 degrees. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So here's what's interesting about this position. Because you do this, you mm -hmm. put pressure here, your lower back muscles don't have to work as much. But your head, these muscles actually have to work harder. They actually mm -hmm. are working much harder to hold up the weight of your head. Mm -hmm. So versus if it was completely upright, there's l much less overall force. And there's like a really famous really famous like photo about this uh let me see if i can pull it up for you um yeah this is the this is like the famous photo that uh, people always reference it's not exactly but it, it's it's representative of the idea right your body mm -hmm. will feel about 12 pounds of pressure for the for the neck here and then anytime mm -hmm. you bend it forward, it's about 32 and 42. And so mm -hmm. your your ability to deal with that without feeling pain is because you have strong muscles here. It's mm -hmm. fine. You can deal with it because you exercise. 
and you also move a lot so i think that's a uh, part of the reason why it's not too big of an issue for you um mm -hmm. so if we just go back right so this is what happens and this is sort of the angle that your neck is bending backwards and so mm -hmm. i just prepared a little other photo here that you can see we'll send this back so this is what i mean so these are the mm -hmm. joints that we're more worried about when your head is forward these joints can get irritated if we spend some time and sometimes that can cause headaches that come around like this that come around like that but if you don't mm -hmm. deal with it it's not a big deal. It's just a matter of risk. It's a matter of how likely is it that you'll deal with it. And because you're in this position, um, if you hold it for a long period of time, it can somewhat increase your risk. Okay? Just a slight mm -hmm. increase. And so mm -hmm. I don't think you necessarily have to change it. I think it's similar to you know, what your doctor mentioned in that if you don't feel any issue, it's not something that you'll necessarily have to change but i think when you are in this position it still can lead to some tightness in the in the neck and over mm -hmm. long long periods of time like after four to five years of you constantly doing this it could probably overall increase the risk a little more you know mm -hmm. um so I, so i wanted to show you a few things that you could possibly do you know, as a stretch between your games, as a exercise at the end of your workout to help with this. So our goal is to stretch these muscles here mm -hmm. and then strengthen these muscles here. Okay. And that mm -hmm. helps you more easily keep your head up so you can develop a strong neck. Um, and before we show you that, does that make sense to you or do you have any questions with that? Yeah, I understand it clearly, I guess. Yeah, so um, it's good that you don't really have headaches, which is nice. But here's yeah, the uh, other... You know, like, maybe I have uh, ten, uh, five or ten minutes uh, after I ended my, you know, like, uh, the trainings. Uh -huh. I maybe have, like, some mini headache. And mm. after that, it's, it uh, expires. Like, Got it. five Got or it. ten minutes. Maybe, Got like, it. less... Got it, got it. So I think, hey, that, that could be a reason why. Because mm -hmm. those muscles, and here, here's another picture. These are the muscles that I'm talking about. And there's actually mm -hmm. a little nerve that comes out of this triangle. And that's why it can cause the headaches. Mm -hmm. So I will show you what you can do to help. Um, but before we do, this is the other picture that you sent me. Um, mm -hmm. And then my biggest concern here is actually, you know, and you can see it with with this arm too, in that your arms are out a lot. This is what we call abduction right here, this angle here. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then, um, so let's see. And also, at the same time, they are rotated inwards, right? Like you're doing this, and the same thing, you rotate it inward like that. Yes. Okay? And so what happens is, you remember that muscle that I we were show, what I was showing you before. Um, yeah. That muscle, where is it? No, not this one. That muscle can get really stiff. That specific muscle, right here. Because when you are turning your shoulder inward, when you're rotating inward like this, mm -hmm. you are you are shortening this muscle. This muscle gets mm -hmm. shorter, right? So, you know, instead of being in this position, it's like this, it's like that, mm -hmm. right? So then it's tight. And then that also I, is probably leading to you feeling this when you lift your arm up. Okay, so it's, this- it's, You know, like I have mm -hmm. the, 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 uh, the pain like in the shoulder only with high weights. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. if i'm using a trainings but mm -hmm. in the lifestyle i didn't feel like the pain in the, in the shoulder yeah which is which is fine right so the the main idea is okay like it's not something necessarily you'll have to change it's mm -hmm. just likely that because this is stiff um mm -hmm. you know 
you're going to be using these big muscles a lot more when you're lifting your arms up versus some of these smaller ones here, right? Because these, these smaller ones, when you lift your arm up, keep the ball against the cup of the arm bone here, right? Mm -hmm. This is, this is the arm bone. And so there's these four little muscles here that keep the ball in the cup, if that makes mm -hmm. sense. And then so mm -hmm. uh, when you lift your arms up, the ball will sometimes when you get tired or if you use these big muscles can move up like that and irritate this this muscle over here. Oh, oh yeah. I understand. And then and so uh, a lot of the times if you keep that stiffness, we're not using these smaller ones. Right? You have to actually train and use it while you're lifting your arm up. Um, but that gets a little more complicated of a discussion. But that's the overall mm -hmm. reason why that, hey, you know, when you are sitting like this and your arms are rotated inwards, it can lead to, you know, you feeling that when you lift your arms up higher, especially with heavy weight, because you're not mm -hmm. you, you're not used to using those muscles and and just so you know they're called the rotator cuff muscles so it's like this rotator, rotator cuff. cuff yeah rotator cuff like that oh wait just, i'll google it <laughs> yeah yeah just so you know um but that's the name of the small four muscles that really stabilize oh. the shoulder so they're really important to keep the the mm -hmm. ball as i said in that in that cup um so this is the so if we review right we have the these neck muscles that get really stiff here neck muscles get stiff here probably a little bit of weakness here and then you probably have some tightness in the muscles here because of this guy mm -hmm. and when you're like this when you're like this i'm expecting that you're aiming with more of your arm like bending your elbow like this and your wrist not so much using your shoulder yes right so you you keep it there too and that can give you more of a sense of control sometimes when you are leaning forward like that mm -hmm. um this is good i'm glad that your for your thighs are parallel your feet are flat on the ground that's all good for you there and we'll we'll get into the lower back after i show you some of the exercises so um mm -hmm. before i do do you have any questions with all of this I think I, I wanted to ask like if I wanted to switch my the posture. Mm -hmm. I, I have a thoughts about that. That I have to use like the Kronstein, like to to use like the monitor more closer for me. So mm -hmm. maybe after that uh I can maybe like lean uh not like at this at this angle. I don't know how to fix it maybe. Uh, because because maybe you want it... your monitor a little closer like this? Uh, yeah, and maybe I will be more like the back. Got and it, yeah, I, because you'll be I right will... here, right? Yeah, maybe yeah. It, it will be like the problem, but I think what will be like with my arm position or something like this. Yeah. So I, so uh... I think it, it's something that we would explore, definitely not within the season, right? Like definitely not as you... Um, are preparing for a big event uh, we don't try to yeah, change the posture hard, as much yeah. yeah because it could affect your performance it could affect your confidence and i don't want to change that yet but i definitely think it's helpful and and here's the thing um us in certain postures it's just like sensitivity it takes time for us to get used to it it's exactly mm -hmm. the same so our nerves get mm -hmm. used to certain angles so you know maybe step one will be here then step mm -hmm. two will be here. Then step three will be here. And at the same time, we might move you here. And because your arm will probably be around here, you'll have more space for the monitor to move up a bit. Mm -hmm. So it, it will be gradual in nature. It's not going to mm -hmm. be zero to 100. Not like this and this one all the way here. That sometimes will feel too off. And you mm -hmm. can just slowly get used to it. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it will take like maybe one year to adapt to it or something. So like it, it can it can be as quick as a week or it can be as as maybe like one to two months. It just depends on how quickly you adapt to it and how much you practice. So yeah, it, I guess it, it will be the good for me because I think that I.
Yeah. Good on Berlin. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so it was fine for me. Mm -hmm. So I think yeah. um, really in the research, they show that it takes five days of dedicating 40 minutes a day to change mm -hmm. your motor control. But mm -hmm. I think what's more realistic is, you know, if you actually change and play with it for a whole day, you can change it as quick as one to two days. And that's something mm -hmm. that happened when I work with a Counter-Strike player. I asked them to change their wrist position. They were able to change it within uh, two days. Mm -hmm. So um, anyways, let's get into the actual oh, exercises. And, and one, more, one, one more, one more question. Yeah, um, of course. What's up? What, what kind of chair maybe will help me to make more, not like more pressure on my back? Mm -hmm. Like I have, yeah, I have a pillow. Yeah, I noticed that. We see that yeah, right here. I, yeah, I, I used it like after the Berlin because mm -hmm. before the Berlin, I didn't use the pillow uh -huh. uh, when I played at home. But when I was like on the boot camp and mm -hmm. after on the tournament, I have this mini pillow behind my back. Right. And when I came back, I, I was like, it's something missing here around my back. <laughs> yeah. Oh, interesting. So you got used to it. Yeah, I didn't use it, and after the boot camp and uh, the Berlin, yeah, uh, I I had to use this pill. So maybe, um, yeah, I can definitely recommend more. some, and we'll talk. I mean, we'll I'll show you a little more about your lower back oh, after this, okay? Uh, because yeah. we're gonna describe. I'll help you understand what what your lower back is doing, what the chair's purpose is. Um, but let's mm. first go, I'll just quickly show you some exercises because I think mm. these can be helpful for you to just do. Um, okay. th this is one really good stretch that you can, cons uh, or exercise that you can consider doing. It's called a postural hold. And all you're doing is you bring your chest up. So your chest is coming up like this. You're going to squeeze your shoulders back a little bit. And then you want to tuck the chin. This is the big focus here. You want to tuck and then you elongate the back of your neck and so you'll see i'm not looking down my head still stays level do you see that so we can repeat oh, that it's hard again. to do it <laughs> i know because it and it's it's just practice right something that will take practice right your head stays completely level you see that so it stays level i'm not my head isn't looking down like this yep and you hold it for about five to ten seconds and so this is something I can send you so that you can review on your own. Uh, but mm -hmm. it's just a nice little practice. It's three big points, chest, shoulders, and then neck. And so this is a nice little strengthening exercise to yeah, help. It's work. like the doing um, the gym trainings. Like, yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Like just like doing a gym thing. training. Yeah. Oh, Dragon yeah. Ball. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah, this I like this shirt. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then this is a stretch that you can do that targets the actual muscles that get stiff, right? Mm -hmm. That specifically work on the ones that might lead to that those headaches, right? So what I would recommend for you to do is you can try this, and I'll I'll leave this whole link for you uh, in Discord so you can always reference back at it. Um, but it can be a good stretch that will maybe at the end of your day, you don't feel the five to 10 minutes. You feel zero because you're stretching it throughout the day. You're going to take time to do this stretch, you know, one time in between your screen blocks or after four maps, you do a stretch like this. Mm -hmm. So this can be helpful for that. Okay. And so I'll, like I said, I'll send you this link so you can try it um, so that you can mm -hmm. see how it feels. And ultimately, the goal is to feel it in that region that I showed you. So right yeah, have a good here. muscles. <laughs> yeah, see, because I, I exercise all the time too, you know? Um, so yeah, that's your neck, okay? Mm -hmm. Those are some mm -hmm. key exercises for your neck. And then I'll probably at the end of this, because you have your, your shoulder concern, I'll share some exercises for the shoulder. But let's talk about your back. Right. Let's let's quickly get into your back mm -hmm. because, mm -hmm. yeah, you know what you said, you said you went to the doctor and he said, hey, you know, it looks like your back is really straight when you're leaning forward. Right. And and normally when we have our when we're leaning forward, if your back is completely straight, 
then we use uh, then different muscles tend to get stiff and different muscles tend to get weak. But mm -hmm. when I was looking at your pictures, I I noticed that it was more rounded, right? In all of the pictures that you sent me, just like this one. So even mm -hmm. though it looks like your back is straight, mm -hmm. it's your lower back is rounded over here. Mm -hmm. Right. And so, good. and so what what happens with that is. Uh, it doesn't matter what what postures that we end up in. It it just if we hold it for long periods of time, certain muscles can get stiff and certain muscles can get weak. So, um, when you're doing that, this happens. You can think of it like well, you're in this tilt. You can think of your pelvis as like a little bucket, like this, right? It mm -hmm. rocks back and mm -hmm. forth. When you rock back, your lower back rounds like that. So it's rounding kind of like this and then it rocks mm -hmm. back. And because of that, there's some muscles in the front that get short. There's muscles in the back that get short. So your hamstrings mm -hmm. get short. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then, and then some muscles get weaker, like some muscles over here and muscles over here. And so, mm -hmm. um, eat, and because you have no pain, I would say, again, it's not, that big of an issue that we have to address because you're probably doing exercises to strengthen everywhere around your lower back and everywhere around your core. It just mm -hmm. might mean that you might have some tightness or stiffness because you're spending eight hours or so sitting in that position. Um, of course, you're taking breaks in, uh, every now and then, but um, it's the amount of time that we spend in these postures that really lead to the issues. Right? And so this is what I was talking about. Mm -hmm. When you when you are you are sitting more in like this position, rounded. I mean, not exactly like this, but the other one is mm -hmm. extended where your lower back is arched. Okay. Mm -hmm. And either one has different different changes in your muscles. And so I'm going to show you a few that you can do. You know, at home, like again, just just potentially to help. Oh, this so, is the good. <laughs> yeah, so this is called a hamstring stretch, and we're stretching the muscles here, okay, in my butt. Mm -hmm. Okay, so these are all muscles. You can just stand up, hold it for about twenty to thirty seconds, and again, this can be something that you do between your games or in between your scrim blocks, and maybe, just maybe, if you have actual tightness here it could also help when you actually are in the gym okay mm -hmm. because you'll have more flexibility to do like a lower squat at the gym or a lower leg press um so this is this is one thing or you can try um just reaching down towards the ground like that that will help oh, yeah, stretch I, I, I can reach like with hands uh, the ground. you can you can touch to the ground yeah Okay, good, good, good. Yeah, so th so then the first one might be easier for you to target it. This one. Mm -hmm. So that's one of them. And the second one is these, uh, you can strengthen your stomach here. So do mm -hmm. you do any, do you do any exercises like this at the gym where you work on your core? Yes, yes. Oh, good, good. So then, yeah, this, this is just another one that might be helpful. Um, but mm -hmm. it also helps on muscles for the shoulder, which can be nice. Um, mm -hmm. And then another one, which works on the muscles of the lower back, because in this position, the muscles are longer. Oh, yeah, they're, I understand. They're, they're stretched out here, so they get weaker, right? So we want to do the opposite. Right, we and that might be the reason why you feel soreness because oh, you're oh, overusing yeah. your lower back when you or you use the lower back muscles when you're working out. So it looks like this. Uh, can I uh, one second? I need to translate one exercise. Okay, sure, of course. One second. Yeah. Hip, uh, hyper extension yeah the rectus muscles of the back it's the same yep. like uh, yeah uh, it strengthens it yes. yeah yeah so you do that right uh sometimes got it got it yeah that could be helpful and so this is another one 
mm-hmm. you know it's it's more of a stretch than it is a, a exercise to strengthen these muscles because mm-hmm. it can stretch the spine here because you mm-hmm. are the opposite you're more rounded like this mm-hmm. and so we need to make sure it can move well like that it's like uh we have uh, the similar um exercise it's like the boat mm-hmm. when you when you lift your arms uh, mm-hmm. towards uh, make it upper and your legs you will upper it too so it's oh, like the cool. boat yeah, yeah it's it's maybe like the same way or it's more like uh off the angle i have a more pressure on my back Got so it. it helps like uh so your exercise like make a um, point pressure at the the back yeah. at my weakest point yeah yeah well this one is just a stretch so it's more mm-hmm. to stretch this segment of the back mm-hmm. and and it can help a little bit with the mid back as well mm-hmm. so th- i think this one could be really good for you um mm-hmm. in general because you're so rounded okay mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so th- this one i think is a that last exercise i showed you could be a good one that you can try again i'll i'll leave these all so that you can try or i can link them to you so that um you can reference it Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so to get to your question about the chair, um, mm-hmm. so over here you felt like the lower back was pressing against you. And you yeah, I couldn't like lean this chair more towards to me. I wanted to lean it more. Mm-hmm. But this, one? this chair. Uh, this one? Yeah, yeah, this one, this one on the stage. Because uh-huh. my chair is like the office chair, so we can uh-huh. like you can fix this. So I use a pillow, mm-hmm. uh, but on stage I try to lean it more forward. But I guess there is no much chairs that can be on that kind of angle, like maybe. this. Yes, you want? yes. <laughs> yeah. it will be really nice for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, base. I mean, with any chair. The purpose of the chair is to just make sure that we can maintain whatever posture that we want to sit for an extended period of time. It's just mm-hmm. to support our body, right? And how we actually sit in the chair, uh, as we've described, like this, impacts mm-hmm. how our body uh, functions, whether it be tightness or weakness. Mm-hmm. Um, so for you, I think, yeah, it could be helpful to find a chair that does have a little bit of lumbar support but you know you don't have to change it necessarily because you're you're putting yourself in a rounded position like this like this Mm -hmm. and if you had even more sometimes the chairs come with too much it might feel uncomfortable for you um Mm -hmm. so it is it's just a matter of comfort for you uh if you feel like it's necessary but the lumbar support is not always something that you need mm-hmm. okay mm-hmm. does that yeah. um does that make sense yeah yeah understand so okay. and one, one more question uh mm-hmm. because of the pillow and that's how i lean on the table mm-hmm. i have lower pressure on my back yep exactly but i have more pressure on the neck so yeah i have to train uh more neck and yep. to make my back more flexibility, yeah? Yep, so that's exactly. The point. Exactly, okay. exactly. And probably maybe try some shoulder flexibility because you're spending so much time in what we call internal rotation here, right? And we need to do the opposite, which for you, and if we swap back to my camera, like you're spending mm-hmm. time, our shoulder goes like this, internal and external. Right. Mm -hmm. And so you're spending so much time here that you barely have mobility or you probably do have the mobility here, but it gets stiff. So doing things to open it up. And one of my favorite exercises is like, for instance, if I grab this band, Mm -hmm. this is probably my favorite. You can grab a towel or something and I just pull it over like this and I hold it. Yeah, it's really tight exercise for me. (laughs) Yeah. I try to do it like with, uh, oh, how to say it? One second, I lost my brother. Stretch? Huh? Stretch? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even though it's a palk, it's a little bit of a stretch. Ah. 
Prostě přijít. Je mm, prostě training stick. Tiny. Training stick. Oh, yeah, got it. Yeah, yeah just yeah, like a training like, stick. Like, I see. Like training with yep. that. Yeah, and, it and it's hard, right? To... Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> So because think about it, look how look how much of a closed posture that you're in, right? Mm -hmm. So you you spend so much time here like that, that mm -hmm. these get tight, and so you have to stretch them. You want to un think about it as you're undoing the stress of sitting for that long extended period of time. Oh, it's like the same for the back that I uh, should train like uh, in another. Yes, uh, exactly. The way. Yeah, yep. yes, I'm, yeah. I'm sitting like in that way, and I yep. should use it like in the other, like exactly. with the wrist training. Yeah. Yep. So the same point. Okay. Exactly. Exactly. So Not I can really. definitely give you, you know, a, a few things that you can start with, but I think mm -hmm. it's always good. Um, I mean, I think you're already doing a lot of really great things uh, to stay healthy, you know, and, and take care of your body. I just think that sometimes we don't focus enough on flexibility um, mm -hmm. and that allows us to actually move really well when we do, you know, heavier lifting. So mm -hmm. um, thinking, thinking of flexibility as your foundation or the base. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I, I think that's that's pretty much it. I mean, the only other thing was your your monitor still could be considered pretty close. Um, mm -hmm. Do you ever get like eye dryness? Like your eyes get fatigued, your you get red, no, itchy, no. sore. After I switched my monitor to two hundred forty hertz, uh -huh. hertz, yeah, uh, I didn't have like the eye exhausted thing. Oh, yeah, got it, got it. It was really good. When I have like uh, sixty hertz, it was really interesting. Uh, hard for me, but when I switched. Because uh, the your picture is like more uh, moving, like more clearly. Yep. Like yep. not the you, you can see like the your crosshair by the parts. It's more like the clearest yeah. parts. So it's, it's a really lot more smooth for good sure. for their eyes. So I guess that's why I didn't have that kind of exhausting things because I told my uh, girlfriend to switch like the monitor mm -hmm. uh, on another hers because she had like the same hers that I have before mm. and she said that it was now she didn't have that kind of eye tight tiredness oh good good yeah so and, I guess this theory is working <laughs> yeah yeah and so I mean that's one thing for sure distance wise it it matters um, if you are really feeling some issue because you know obviously when it's really close when we use our eyes our eyes have the mm -hmm. ability to to do this, right? You can see one point. You can focus mm -hmm. on one point. Like if we had two fingers in front of me, if you look at the close finger, your eyes are converging. And then if you mm -hmm. look away like that at distances, it's called accommodating. And so they've mm -hmm. shown in studies that when you are mm -hmm. looking close together like this and when you were really close, it makes your eyes have to work harder. Mm -hmm. So... That's why what we typically recommend is it is like one arm's distance, but plus or minus the length of the forearms here. Oh, let's see if I can show you. Mm -hmm. It's one arm's distance, plus or minus this. So it could be it could be here. So you're okay. You're with it roughly within that range. Probably still a little close. This one is that the one. <laughs> The one at Berlin was definitely a little closer, like you said. Uh, <laughs> oh, like a lot closer. And, and you were looking like, up. And you were looking up here. Yeah, I yeah. moved it more upper because for me it's more comfortable. Uh, yeah. To watching like this. I, I thought that for me it will be like more easier to be in that position because I didn't have to use a lot of energy to fix my... Uh, you know, like neck muscles, and I mm -hmm. didn't like use a lot of energy, but you told completely wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, and you know, to be fair, when you are offloading it with your chest, it does help a little bit, you know, with the amount of pressure on your neck. Um, mm -hmm. So, so ultimately, think of it like this: think of your muscles and your tendons as having like a HP bar, okay? Mm -hmm. And every single time 
let's use this as, as an example. Your for every single time you sit for like three hours, you're slowly losing HP. Like you you lose three HP every hour. But if you have a little better posture, you only lose two HP or one HP per hour. But and then when you get to zero HP, you maybe feel some aching or discomfort. And then on the mm -hmm. flip side, if you rest, sleep, mm -hmm. stretch, massage, ice, heat, everything, it slowly re uh, recovers your HP. Mm -hmm. But because you exercise a lot and you're young, we have a lot of HP in general. You maybe mm -hmm. have 10,000 HP or maybe like 5,000. <laughs> 10,000 beta. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and you can handle it. So you can handle you know, your eight hours, no problem. And you move. So that helps recover your HP a little bit. Mm -hmm. You do your exercises that all helps, but we can help it a little more. So you mm -hmm. don't lose HP as quickly. Does that mm -hmm. help? Does that make a little more sense in terms of how, uh, this, how posture can sometimes lead to problems and, and for you, how it doesn't lead to problems? Yeah, uh, I thought that for me it was comfortable right now. I wanted to switch some things because I think that I'm adept because I don't have enough space on my table, like at my home, because mm -hmm. we're sitting like this close to my yeah. table. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so really I, I, yeah, I don't have like a lot of uh, space. So right now, I guess it was... The, all my posture is the effect of my adaptation. Yes, yes, your yes. circumstance. It, yeah, maybe uh, if I have a good environment in the future, I will not like fix it, I will change it. Yeah, uh, yeah. Just gradually change and, you know, you don't have yeah. to stress about it too much because you don't have any yeah. issue. As long as you exercise, as long as you get up and move between games, you're okay. And I'm, and I'm okay with you doing that too. And just think that, okay, well, I can just do a little bit of the stretches between games and it'll help me even more. Mm -hmm. Okay, so... Yeah, I will try to do it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And of course, I will tell you like the payback. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, yeah. You, I mean, don't worry about it. I, you just let me know how it feels, and I'll, I'll make sure that you get a, the list of all the exercises that you can try. Um, I guess the last thing is, you know, do you have any, you know, what's like the most important thing that you've learned in this past year as a professional player? Mm, like emotional. Anything. Or like the. Mm the hard work is always pays back <laughs> so it was like the main point mm -hmm. because sometimes you can spend a lot of time to playing and you're not winning anything because i'm training like that mm -hmm. uh in previous year mm -hmm. in, uh, in valorant i didn't play like in game or famous teams i played like with guys who wanted to achieve something i played mm -hmm. it played it much more sometimes mm -hmm. we didn't have like the break i didn't know how to use my time correctly mm. and i'm always like evolving and right now uh I, after one year of i i can say like professional scene mm -hmm. i i learned a lot how to spend your time more correctly mm -hmm. because time is the main value uh, the man uh like the money in your life and yeah. you should spend it like with the smart yeah um, yeah exactly exactly and you can't can't realize it when you're 18 or 20 years old or 22 if you don't yeah. if you don't have like a teachers or something like that mm -hmm. so the main thing that i know how to spend more my time with more valuable things mm -hmm. uh i think that i noticed that i have a good mental skills like not tilting because uh, a lot of like haters or like the negative people in the twitter or in the or facebook or whatever like the social media mm -hmm. are using and 
for me it's the most negative will be things if I hear something from my teammates it can it can tilt me mm -hmm. but if uh, 1000 or 10,000 people write me something bad it doesn't tilt me uh, at all good. yeah, yeah. not just that kind of thing <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, um, what about next uh, have a fun when you are playing it's almost like the same point because I found if I trained a lot and I didn't have like a fun to create the strategies or like playing with my teammates you don't have like this uh, mm, if you have a fun and if you if you're training a lot and you always like evolving mm -hmm. one day to another it is the rightest way to achieve something like in all jobs and all like the parts of the lives or something. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know how to say it. They're all like uh, the life, I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So to sum up, you know, make sure that you have fun, you know, in in any endeavor. And while you eat, while it is definitely important to um, take your job seriously, you know, make sure you put yourself in an environment that where you can enjoy what you're doing or maybe select the thing that you actually enjoy. Um, and then two, you want to have, you want to work on developing mental skills so that it doesn't distract you uh, from maybe improving on a regular basis. Um, and mm -hmm. was, uh, what to was make that? sure that you uh, manage your time wisely. Right yes. to make sure that you pay attention to use the only currency that we really have, which is time. That's all we have, and so we want to be effective and efficient with how we spend our time. And it sounds like you you are definitely doing that, which is awesome. Um, so great. Uh, I think that's pretty much it. Do you have any mm -hmm. other questions? You know, for me, that you know you mm -hmm. might be curious about for your body, for your health. Now can I you call you like the Mad Senpai? <laughs> yes, you can. All the time. Okay, Mad Senpai. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> oh, so man. I will probably want like to maybe after one month because mm -hmm. I didn't have like a result after one week or one day mm -hmm. to tell you if it's more comfortable for me or like something like this. Mm -hmm. I will try to do it like every day. It yeah. will be hard, but so, I will try to do it. <laughs> so so I think what you should do, the plan should be after you guys are done with finals, then you should look to gradually change. Okay, mm -hmm. and, and what I typically recommend is that you create rules within your day to gradually mm -hmm. change uh, your posture. So every time you finish a game, you quickly check, oh, how am I sitting? Every time you drink water, you quickly check. Every time you, um, whatever, something within the game. Every time you're done with your review session with Gambit, you quickly check. Because then it allows you, um, instead of forcing yourself to remember, you just use certain anchors in your day to gradually change your posture over time. Mm -hmm. um, and then doing that, plus some of the exercises, you can gradually improve it. But... You know, you can always reach out to me so that I can give you some feedback to say, yes, you're doing well. That looks a little better because um, doing both can really help. One, it's mm -hmm. you're doing it by yourself. Two, you get a little feedback from me saying, yeah, look, it looks like your angle has changed from 45 to about 60 degrees. Good job. Mm -hmm. You know, so uh, I think that's how we can approach it. But really look to change it maybe after um, after your finals and then. Uh, start with some of these stretches so that you could take care of your body and make sure that, mm -hmm. you know, nothing, there's no overall risk as you continue to prepare for the champions or championship in Berlin. It's mm -hmm. going to be in Berlin as well, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, exciting. So, you know, everyone's going to see the posture again, and I can't wait. I can't wait for that. <laughs> you can be like this for everyone. You can show them that you're stretching in between, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. It will be a, ni a nice reference. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Thanks again um, for taking the time to do this. 
We really yeah, appreciate it. Thank you, Mad Senpai. <laughs> All right. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you need individualized coaching for your injuries, sleep, exercise, or nutrition, you can check out our Patreon. And of course, you can catch us live on YouTube or Twitch. Play more, hurt less.